Hello and welcome back to Probability Theory, the video course where we talk a lot about probability distributions and what we can do with them. And in today's part 32, we will talk more about the famous center limit theorem and in particular, we will discuss the so-called the moivre laplace theorem. In short, one can say that this theorem is just an application of the central limit theorem to the binomial distribution. However, before we go into the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter, you can use the link in the description to download a lot of additional material for the videos. And with that information out of the way, let's immediately start discussing the so-called the moivre laplace theorem. And as I said before, it's not so complicated because we can see it as a special case of our central limit theorem. However, for historical and maybe practical reasons, it still has its own name. And at this point you can already remember, it's all about the approximation of the binomial distribution. And this one is not completely new for us, because the binomial distribution was already discussed in part 4. Hence you might remember that we have exactly two inputs for the binomial distribution, namely a natural number n and the probability p. And now the thing is that such a binomial distribution comes out if we repeat a so-called Bernoulli experiment n times. And this is exactly the reason why we can use the central limit theorem when we send n to infinity. And there please recall that the Bernoulli distribution is the simplest one we could have because it's simply a coin toss with probability p. So this is easy to visualize because we only have two outcomes, so if a ball falls down here, it can go to the left or to the right. Therefore we could say it goes with probability p to the right hand side and with probability 1 minus p to the left hand side. And obviously this picture here is very fitting for p is equal 1 half. And now you know for the binomial distribution, we would repeat this experiment n times, so after the first step here, we do it again. Hence the number of layers we have here is exactly given as our natural number n. And indeed, this particular visualization of the binomial distribution is known as a golden board. So you can construct such a board and then some beads fall down. And then here on the bottom, you can collect them in columns to see the binomial distribution. And obviously we will collect more beads in the middle than on the edge cases. And in addition, the more beads we use, the clearer the picture gets. And if we want to get names to the columns at the bottom, we could say how often we had to go to the right. This means we start at zero and the last one has the name n. And now not so surprising, usually this number is called k. And indeed we already know the formula for the probability to land inside the column k. Namely it's n choose k times 1 minus p to the power n minus k. So it's a discrete probability distribution, but the central limit theorem now tells us that we can approximate the whole thing by a continuous bell curve. And in order to see this more concretely, let's go to RStudio again. There let's simulate our Bernoulli experiment with p is equal to 1 half. This means we can just define an urn that has a 0 and a 1 in it. And now sample urn will give us 0 or 1 with probability 1 half. And now we know we want to repeat that experiment with our lowercase n, so we have n layers and let's say we take 20. And let's say we have a large number of beads which we call capital N. Hence the only thing we have to do now is to do this sample lowercase n times. Hence you should see what we get, namely we have an output with 20 numbers, ones and zeros. And now we can just count how many ones we have by putting sum in the front. And then you should see we get a number between 0 and 20. And this one we replicate exactly capital N times. This means we get a lot of results, which we should plot in a histogram. And then the picture we get should be similar to the one from before. And now we can repeat it again and again to see what changes. We have the same behavior as before and we also already see the approximation of the bell curve. And in fact this is the idea we have 
we want to make this complicated binomial distribution calculable. So you see there it's helpful that we know the values of the bell curve of the normal distribution very well. So maybe again this histogram we have here can be nicely approximated by a continuous function. And by ignoring almost all constants, this curve is given by e to the power minus one half x squared. And indeed this whole thing is an advantage, because as we can see, for a given k, and let's say we take this one, the correct value of the binomial distribution is here and given by this formula there. However, now instead of calculating this binomial coefficient, we can just take the value of the exponential function. Obviously this is just an approximation, because the center limit theorem tells us that only for n to infinity we have our convergence. However, in the case that the approximation is already good enough, we can use it in applications. So let's formulate the rough result we have here. If n is large enough, and if k is close enough to the middle point, and the middle is exactly the expected value of the binomial distribution, which is n times p. And then the result we get is that the probability to get k in the binomial distribution is roughly the same to get k in the normal distribution. And there I want to put in the correct coefficients, so we have 1 over the square root of 2 pi n times p times 1 minus p. So this is the factor in front, and then we have the exponential function e to the power minus 1, and then also 2n times p times 1 minus p in the denominator. And most importantly, we have k minus n times p squared in the numerator. So now what you should see is that we have a probability mass function of the binomial distribution on the left hand side, and the probability density function of the normal distribution on the right hand side. And now the statement of the Moivre and Lagrange is that they are roughly the same. This means in a practical calculation we could substitute the left hand side with the right hand side which could be much easier to calculate. However as you can see from the mathematical point of view this whole statement here is not really precise but we can make it precise when we look at the limit. Hence this will now be our explicit the Moivre Laplace theorem. And in fact, the only requirement we have there is that we have a p between 0 and 1. So everything in between is possible, but 0 and 1 are excluded. And now what we can do in the precise formulation is to look at the ratio of both instances here. Therefore we can take the PMF of the binomial distribution and divide it by the PDF of the normal distribution. And then what we get is a nice quotient, which should be roughly equal to 1. Hence, if we subtract 1, we have a number close to 0. And we are not really interested in the sign of that number, so we can take the absolute value to make it positive. However, at this point we have to put in that we stay with k around our expectation n times p in the limit n to infinity. Hence we go through all k between 0 and n with the following property. Namely, what we put into our exponential function here should be bounded by a constant. So let's say this input here is less or equal than a constant c. And there it does not matter at all how large we choose c, but we just have to fix it at the beginning. This is technical detail we already know from the center limit theorem, because if we increase n, then this whole maximum here will shift to the right. In other words, we also have to adjust the chosen k, and this can be done with this maximum here. There are also other possibilities, but now we have the nice statement, when we send n to infinity, this whole term here goes to zero. So what actually happens in the formula here is the same as in the center limit theorem, which means we shift the histogram to zero, and we standardize everything which means we also scale the whole plot such that we get our standard bell curve. And then we have exactly the pointwise approximation as we want it. Maybe to see this, we should shift this factor n times p times 1 minus p to the numerator. Because then we just have our standard bell curve in the denominator here. It does not change the result, but it may be helpful for the interpretation. 
So there we have it. This is the famous de Moivre for Laplace theorem as a special case of the center limit theorem. Okay, I think that's good enough for today. Let's continue with the next video where we start with statistics. So I really hope I meet you there and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.